The third major subtype in the collections library is maps. Now, maps are somewhat fundamentally different from both sequences and collections, and we can especially see this if we look at the declaration of them. Whereas sequences and collections have one type parameter, maps have two. And this illustrates the fact that you can have multiple type parameters on things. They're just separated by commas. The idea of a map is that a map has stores key value pairs. So type A is the type of the key, and type B is the type of the value. And you can add them in to your map, and then you can look up values based upon keys, and it's supposed to be efficient. That's the goal. Now, different implementations will give you different efficiencies for doing this. So let's run through some kind of simple examples, much like we did with sets, to help illustrate the idea here. So I want to create a, I'll call it an in map for a number map. So the elements that we give to maps have to be tuples. Okay? And this is actually why the arrow notation kind of exists in Scala. So this creates a tuple that has a first element of the string one and a sec second element of the integer one. And as you might guess here, I'm going to add two, two, and three, three. So this is going to produce a map where the key type is a string and the value type is an int. And by default, we get an immutable map. There are also mutable maps. And just like with the sets, you have different types of operations. The assignment operations will, will be useful for, for mutable maps. Where the things get kind of different is how we index into them. So our in map you index it by the key. Well, our key type here is a string. So I look for, for example, two inside of here, and it should give me back the value associated with that. So this is a fundamental difference from the arrays and lists where you index always using integers, and the integers have to be between zero and the length minus one. Here we index with whatever the key type is, and it gives us back whatever value was associated with that. Now, of course, this winds up being accomplished by having an apply method that takes type A, our key type, and returns type B, our value type. Okay. Now, here I've made it with string, but type A can be anything. So let's make nmap2, make it a val, nmap2, and I'm going to change things around a little bit here. I'm going to make this one go from integers to strings. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. So you pretty much always use a map if you want to index, if you want your key type to be something other than an int. Because once again, arrays, lists, and all sequences, your, what is effectively your key type is an integer. It's an index. But even if your key type is an integer, there are still situations where you might want to use a map. So this happens to be one of them. This would be a very inefficient array okay, or list. I only have three values in it. They have keys of 10, 100, and 1,000. And the values stored there are the associated strings. So I can look up in map 2 sub 100 except I can't type. There we go. And it gives me back the string 100 from here. If I had wanted to store this in an array, I would have to make an array with 1,001 entries, most of which would be whatever we wanted to be to represent empty. Uh, they could possibly be null, or we'd have to make an array of option types, and most of them would be none. Okay, but You'd, we'd waste a lot of space there because we only wanted to store three things. So even when you want your key type to be an int, it's still possible to use a map. But a map can be keyed on basically any type you want, but a proviso is it really should be an immutable type. Okay, so string, int, I guess you could use a, a double if you wanted. 
you can put them on tuples, you can also make case classes. So many of those things can be used as keys, and then you can look up the values, and values can literally be anything mutable or immutable. As we saw before with our sets, we can use operations like plus, and so I could add another tuple here, four, string four goes to four, and so now this has one, two, three, and four inside of it, and I can also use minus to take things out. Now when I pull things out, I only have to give the key because that is sufficient. Now note that nmap was immutable. If I had wanted this to still have the four, I'd have to use res 40. So if I, instead of nmap here, I did res 40, res 40 was the collection that had one, two, three, and four, and I pulled out the two, so I have one, three, and four there. So hopefully that gives you a feel for maps. They are just a collection that allows you to store values based upon any type of key that you want. And so if you want to go beyond having integer indexes to look things up, a map is the collection that gives you the ability to do that.